Yo, what's up everybody? It's your main man here, DJ Ron the Mechanic, back with another video. What's going on everybody? Hope y'all doing good, doing good. So, yeah, so look, in today's video, y'all, look, I want to talk about the car audio systems, you know, so, I mean, compared to when I first started in car audio, I mean, it has changed big time, you know, from... Oh my gosh, I mean, hey, look, I'm telling my age, but look, I don't care. I mean, when I got into car audio, I mean, I'll go back to when uh, there wasn't no CD players. You had the cassette decks, man, you know, with the two knobs, you used to call them two shaft radios, you know? So you had that right there. Uh, you had your six by nines, you had your five and a quarters, your six and a half, and then you know the Fords had the odd looking size speakers, the five by sevens, six by eight, you know, stuff like that. Oh uh, man, even you know, I would say even back in the day, even uh when bazooka came out, you know, bazooka had the bazooka tubes, man. Hey, those suckers used to hit, man. Oh my gosh, yeah, that was like you know a, a new wave coming up back then you know i mean i can go on and on you know about the audio uh matter of fact i know some of y'all may not know about some companies that i know of you know like for instance just to put it out there now i know a lot of y'all think that oh wow you know kicker got this quad box that's out there with 412s in it right so some of y'all probably thinking, oh man, man, that's awesome, man. Kicker the first one to come out with a, a quad box with four twelves. No, no, no. Mm -mm. I'm pretty sure, look, all my old school audio heads know. If you heard of Savard back in the days, I'm just to let y'all know, Savard speakers was the first ones that I know of that came out with a quad box. Not only one, they had two quad boxes. That's right. They had a quad box with four twelves and they had one with four fifteen. So hey, they was ahead of their time, y'all. I'm telling you. That Savard, hey, they was handling things back then. So Hey, if y'all know what I'm talking about, hey, like I said, on, on, only the old schoolers, they, they you know, especially from where I'm from, you know, I'm from Baton Rouge, you know, so that's where Savard was built that down there. So, yes, they had a 412 box and they had a 415 box. And if I remember the name correctly, they called them uh, the Challenger. Yep. I'm trying to remember the model number. I think it was the Challenger... I think for the fifth four fifteens, I think it was the Challenger fifteen oh four. I think, and I think the twelve one was the Challenger twelve oh four, something like that. You know, it, it, it it's been a minute, you know, since I even seen it. You know, but yeah, Savard was the first one to come out with that, and the things that they had back then. I'm talking like this was. Like early 90s, yeah, you know, I mean, you know, that's when the car audio scene was really booming then. So, yeah, they was ahead of their time, you know, so. But still, you know, hey, much props to Kickers. I mean, hey, look, you know, Kicker been around a long time. I mean, hey, even I done had some Kickers, you know, so, hey, much, much love to them. You know, hey, look, they still doing their thing, so. But, uh. Yeah, when it comes to his audio, man, I mean, look, not everybody can hook up their own audio system. Me, I was lucky enough to, uh, let's say, had a mentor from a local car shop, car stereo shop back in the day, you know, took the time with me, you know. Hey, all I can say, answered a lot of questions that I, <laughs> that I was asking. And trust me, I had a lot of questions, you know. I mean, this was before I even had my own car then, you know. So, yeah, I, I was in the car audio early back then. I'm talking, uh, let's break it down. I first got into the car audio back in 1985 when I first got into car audio. I know some of y'all weren't even born at that time, you know. 
But that's when I got started in the car audio, 1985. That's right. And you ought to know the first brand that I was introduced to back then was Rockford Falls Gate. The local shop that was in our area, uh, it was, man, look, it was, it was all about Falls Gate, man. That, that's what it was. You had, oh my gosh, I can, re I can pretty much remember the display that they had at the shop, man. They had, from top to bottom, they had the Punch 45, they had the Punch 150, they had the Power 300, they had the Power 6, what was that, that was the six, 600 or 650, what they called it back then? No, I don't forget, you know. And of course they had the Power 1000. You know, back then the Power 1000 was about the biggest amplifier out back then. And boy, yeah, it was kind of expensive back then too, though, you know. But hey, that's what I grew up around, you know. Frostgate. So I mean, that's probably why that I still have my collection of Frostgate amplifiers now, you know. I I don't want to get rid of them. I mean, shoot, look, those things wasn't cheap. <laughs> you know, you had to work your butt off to get those. But quality amplifiers. And the one that I have, it still plays to this day. No problem. So, hey, look, without any further ado, look, y'all, I'm going to just go over my audio system that I installed myself. So, yeah, let me just take y'all through it. All right, y'all, I'm back. So going over my system in my car. So, all right, here's the the back door. So y'all can pretty much see what I did to my car there. So, so y'all see I have the scar tweeters back here. I made these little enclosures for them. And I also, of course, replaced my six and a halves. So there is no factory speakers in this car at all. All that is taken out. All that been taken out. So for those for the first time seeing my car, so I'm showing you everything what I have. So as you see, I have three TVs. I have a TV in each headrest. And of course I have a flip down. That's a 12 inch. And these right here are seven inch monitors. I bought these a couple years back from, uh, you know, it was this company on eBay. Pretty much they was getting rid of the old stock. They was overstocked with a lot of the uh, old uh, products, whatever. So they had like, oh man, at that time they had like a bunch of these left and they sold the whole set, which it came with a, uh, a uh, distributor box, which enables you to run like an extra two or three other screens with no problem. They sold the whole kit. Plus you can actually change this here out. It came with three different colors, this beige, uh, gray and black. So you had that choice of colors that you could go with. So they sold that set for uh, $90. So I had bought one for my car and I had bought one for my, uh, for my baby girl car, that was the car that my wife used to drive, the 300. So we have a set of nose. So yeah, that was a good deal there from eBay back then. So that's my other door right there, y'all see it. Another tweeter on there. And of course, oh, I meant to tell y'all too. Uh, this right here. See these cars, they come with that, that fabric. I took that off our... I redid these, wrapped those with that, that vinyl right there. So I did that myself, trying to make everything match. And of course, y'all see my console right there. Yep, I built me a little console right there. Let's see through. Built that myself, wrapped it up. Y'all even see it got a look, got a cup holder right there. We got a look little charging port right there y'all see it got the 3.0 fast charging on it uh that's the little button you can turn it on and off 
and it even shows the uh the voltage right through there and of course this do light up yep and underneath there too i do have leds on the inside so all that light up so i did all that and of course this is my rear back here y'all see i have scar tweeters back there same way uh i gotta do another bracket for those i kind of <laughs> broke them a little bit basing too much and i gotta replace that so i just put some on the edge right quick just to hold it in place so i still gotta get time to work that uh i made this little centerpiece right here put an led up in it and of course you see the led strip right there and i have six by nines back here these are those uh what you call it these are the uh high anchor uh four ways so that's what i'm using for the six by nines back there and just to mention now this right here uh is a 2015 nissan versus so it doesn't come with any speakers on the rear at all so i had to do some metal cutting back there and you know kind of got my shape from the original carpet that was back there traced it on some wood and that's how i got my shape for the fit back there and of course i wrapped it same color gray so yep that took a little time to do there so now on to what everybody wants to see the amp rack so here we go so this is my amplifier rack right here, y'all. Try and squeeze it in so y'all can see. So there it is. This is my rack that I built right there. Now, of course, when I first started, it was just kind of, you know, kind of open pretty much, you know, when you saw the wires and everything. So uh, I had a guy in one of my... Uh, what was that one of my videos when I had just built this here and the guy gave me the idea to say, hey, why don't you do a, a cover plate, a beauty panel, whatever that he called it, you know, make everything look good. So I was like, wow, I said, hmm, let me try that. And so, yeah, I went on and took that idea and ran with it. So look, y'all see how it came out looking good. Of course, I got an LED right there in the middle there so yep now this is my first time ever doing it you know making a panel like this so hey it came out looking pretty good and it does make the the amp rack look a whole lot different too look at it if you zoom back out look at it that looks good there now i know some of y'all probably saying wait why you got the fan right there hey that's just my preference uh I put it on there, you know, just, uh, you know, keep a little extra wind on this here. Um, now, this right here is the old Rockford Frost Gate 600.4. Yep, 600.4, the old Rockford Frost Gate 4 channel. It still works good, y'all. I just wish I could give me another Rockford Frost Gate symbol to put back in there, you know. I'm, I'm going to try and call Rockford Fosgate just to see if I can get another sticker to put back over this because I liked it that you know uh and of course over here this is the the Scar Audio RP1200 1.D down right there is running my subs and of course right over here is the Audio Control Matrix Plus I love this right here uh, this is basically a uh, a line driver, really, you know. And what's so unique about it? Okay, you have your front, your rear, and your sub inputs. So, with this, you can basically, pretty much, you can run, let's say if your radio up front has uh, three sets of RCA cable outputs. Let's say it has the, you know, the front, the rear, and the sub output. So 
If you feel like you know you want to run all those wires, hey, look, you can run your set of wires to each connection, subwoofer connection right there, your rear and your fronts. So what this would do here is it will help out your RCA voltage. You know, let's say you uh, put a test on your on your radio just to see what the uh, RCA voltage is looking like. You know, when you, you know setting your gains and everything. So if you see kind of like, let's say your radio only putting out, let's say two volts uh, you know, on the uh, RCA uh, outputs, hey, you can gain magic with this bad boy here. And you can even, I mean, shoot, this bad boy here can even go up higher than that, really. But it's always correctly to make sure everything is gained up, you know, matching. You, know, you don't want no, none of that distortion or anything, messing up your speakers and all that there. So, but yeah, this right here, I love this device here. When I say it wakes up the sound, oh my gosh, before I had this, my system, it was okay. You know, it, it sounded all right. But when I added this right here, oh my gosh. This right here is a game changer, y'all. I'm telling you. That's a game changer right there. It has its own. Uh, matter of fact, this one here, it did come with a bass knob. So, matter of fact, even though this came with a bass knob, I don't even use it. I don't, I don't, I don't even have it connected. All I have is one bass knob, and that's controlled by this right here. That's it. So that bass knob that takes care of hey, everything over there. So of course, you know, it, it's kind of like now, if y'all remember the original matrix, it was slightly different. It didn't have, you know, the uh, bass control knob and everything, you know, like this one here. Then plus on the inside, uh, you can take this plate off and you can do a little adjustment on it say like voltage wise like this one here it, it it's set for the deliver it set at like five volts you know a preamp so hey that hey look trust me that that's strong right there so yeah it, it does its job i'm telling you this little device is worth it y'all i'm telling y'all it's, it's worth it i love it so yeah so that is my setup right there like I said, all the work is done by me. Now, of course, on the uh, subwoofer part, the rear part there, let me pop the trunk. Oh, man. There we go. All right. Got the latch open. For those that didn't see it before, so here's my trunk right here. This is my build right here. So, yep, I'm running Scar Audio. So, I know everybody, look, everybody has their own preference for its brand that they run, uh, you know. And I would definitely tell you, before I purchased these here, I was running Memphis Audio for six years. Had no problem with them. No problem at all. Matter of fact, it was a different car though. I was running uh, two Memphis PR, which are the, the power reference uh, 15s. I was running those for six years. Had no problem with those at all. So when I sold the car and pretty much sold some of the equipment and everything, so I decided to go with something else, you know, uh, wanted to stay on a budget. So that's when I came across these Scar Audios right here. So I'm like, okay, well, let me get these a try, you know. So it's nothing too fancy. Uh, these right here are the SDRs. And this is the box from Scar itself. Now what I did, I just put a little twist to it, which I bought some material and I wrapped the box myself in certain spots i did all that wrapped it myself and of course i made my little side panels right there and i do have leds behind there and over here same thing made my little panel and i also have a 
I don't know if y'all can see it good. I have an excess power battery right there. And I have that little device that you see in the back. That uh that NVX, that is a uh battery isolator. So pretty much I have my battery split. So this excess power right here is is running my whole entire amp rack. My whole entire amp rack is hooked up to this battery right here and the battery up front, just basically for, you know, everyday cranking a car up. So, uh, like I said, this setup here is three years old. I haven't had no problems out of it at all. No problems. Now, I know other people, you know, they're gonna say, well, why are you running this here? Well, why don't you do this? Hey, look. You do your system the way you want to do yours. I do mine the way I do mine. And I can tell you, this setup is three years old. I haven't had no problems. My gains are set. These SDRs, I beat the hell out of them whenever I'm at a show or something, whatever. No problem. You know, and once again, you know, I've seen some people in comments like, oh, man, these are trash. Oh, they don't last. Well, if you call them trash, you talking about they didn't last you that long. That means that you trying to do something with these speakers here in which they're not meant for. You just can't go out there and let's say, oh, I'm going to buy a Tarramps 3K and I'm going to put them on these here. What sense does that make? These are not made for that. Just keep it plain and simple. Buy the amplifier that's perfectly matched for those in which I do have the uh, the 1200 which is matched perfectly with these and I had no problem with them. Games are set correctly. No problem with these at all. You know? So when I look at people that say like, oh man, these don't last. Man, I blew these. Okay, well, first of all, let, let, let's start from the beginning. What your games look like? Are they set correctly? What type of power are you running on those? You know? You have to think about those things there. What are your purpose for the woofers? I mean, are you going for just sound quality or something just to listen to? Or you want to jump in the SPL lane? Well, yes, of course, these may not be the ones for you. You're going to want the ones that are going to cost, well, at least four, five, six hundred dollars $600. You're going to want some woofers that cost that much that could take that amount of beating. These are not made for that. This is just me personally. This is just no regular beat. That's it, you know? And it still get the job done. And trust me, I don't surprise a lot of people at shows, man. When they hear me, they be like, man, what you got back there, man? What you got some uh, some sundowns or what you? I say, no, bro. I say, man, I got some budget speakers back there. I popped the trunk. And, you know, they be like, what? Oh, man, I can't believe that. Yeah. I mean, look, just to keep it 100 with you, it's all about having your system tuned, having your game set properly. You want to worry about none of this. You know, my last two systems I had, the, the Memphis setup that I had for six years, never blew none of my speakers. This setup here is three years old, never blew nothing, <laughs> you know? So I'm like, I, hey, I just don't understand, man. <laughs> but, hey, look, I do what I do with my setup, you know, so. And, of course, this right here, you know, I made this board right there in front. And that right there has LEDs in that, too. So, and, of course, this right here, that's my little power inverter right there. But when I hook my TV up back here, boom, I got a connection. So, yep, that is it, y'all with my setup and of course i do have uh that sound dampening uh material i have kill mat uh, all on the trunk matter of fact my whole trunk is kill matted uh on the inside you can probably tell how the heavy this door is look see how that sound y'all hear that that all that is kill matted all back here, all back on this side right here. It is kill matted all the way up to 
halfway point of this part. This part here, I don't have any sound deadening on it. Just from the from this part of the car, on back, all four doors, I have sound deadening. Listen, y'all see how solid that is? Solid. Hear that? Sound deadening all through there, so. I don't have to look, I don't have to worry about all that, you know? So yeah, that's pretty much it, y'all. So, hey, look, I just wanted to just, you know, go over my, my system in my car, you know, show y'all everything that I have hooked up, you know? Just wanna, you know, hey, how we said, you know, spit a little free game out, you know? And I mean, when it comes to this audio stuff, I mean, hey, look, you got to have a game plan of what you want to do, you know. Think about it. What you want to do? You what you want to hop in a, a contest? <laughs> you know, you, okay. You already know that going to cost you a hell of a lot of money. Cuz if you try to win, you know, going up against four or five other guys, you know, that have that have spent like let's say 5, 6,000 dollars on their system, guess what? You go have to spend the exact amount or even more just to compete with them. Think about that. Now, if you want just a regular, like, like, like my car, I call it a regular little street beater. Hey, get you some regular, you know, on a budget and you still get some nice sound out of it, you know? But I mean, if you try to knock all the paint off the wall, everybody else cars and all of that, then Hey, that's your preference. Go ahead. Hey, look, just look, have your wallet together and go ahead, do what you got to do. You know, and hey, look, ain't no hating in the car game, man. I mean, hey, look, music to me is music. You no, know, either way you look at it, you got your low budget and you got your expensive budget on the audio bills. You know, me personally, hey. Hey, look, I congratulate all the audio bills out there. You know, hey, look, all my bass heads out there. Hey, look, I congratulate all y'all, whether you have one sub, two, three, four, five, all the way up to 20. Hey, look, I grew up in this game. Trust me, I know. I done seen all type of different bills all over. So, hey, I'm just glad to see what car audio is the way it is today, y'all. So, I love it. So, hey, look. This DJ Ronald Mechanic here. Hey, look, hey, look, if you like the video, hey, look, just give me a thumbs up, y'all, and make sure you share me out. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell, y'all. So that way you won't miss out on a video. That's right. So I'm about to head inside. Uh anything else I do to the car? Hey, look, I'll keep y'all posted on it, you know, really go over everything with y'all. So but I just wanted to just share my audio system with y'all, you know, give us, you know, a, a little knowledge on it. That's about it. For those who want to try and do their own work, ain't nothing to it. Just take your time and have patience. That's it. All right, y'all. This is DJ Ron Mechanic. Hey, look, I am out, and I will catch y'all on the next video.